Good evening everyone, and welcome back to the Nightmare Eternal. Now the dream I'm going to talk to you about is a little on the sillier end, but it did bring up like an interesting idea, so that's why I wanted to talk about it. I had a dream that I had gone to hell. I have died, and I am in hell right now. A weird kind of take on hell. It's not like a giant rocks, brimstone, and fire for miles on end. It looks like I was in some guy's basement, but like a labyrinth of a basement. Think like a, I guess... This is before the back rooms even became a thing, right? This is years ago, like 2017, 2018. But anyway, think of like kind of like the back rooms, but with stone walls, and it looked like someone's basement. Uh, the basement we had in my house back in the Jefferson place was very odd because it looked like some of the floor was like cement, while some of the floor was like jagged rocks with just a wooden stairwell. The basement, ah oh man, I don't think I ever recorded any videos in that basement when I was younger, despite like. It having like a very creepy vibe, honestly. It, trust me, if you were in that basement, you would feel you would think you were in some kind of slasher killer's basement, and you were just waiting for him to come down and finish the job. But anyway, it looked like that, but it greatly expanded upon as like a huge labyrinth. You would look up and see just more labyrinths and more kind of stone. You wouldn't really see a sky, but you wouldn't necessarily see an outside. I think that's kind of all it was. Me and a few other friends, who I guess we died at the same time or we just met up, were walking around. We're not being tortured or hunted. It seemed very odd, like, this is not heaven, this is definitely hell, but yet no one's torturing us. No one's dipping us in lava. No one's piercing our genitals with spears. No one's putting giant worm monsters on our heads just for having a dirty thought. No one's grabbing us by our limbs and ripping us in half like Goro from Mortal Kombat just because we told a little white lie to our parents. No, we're just walking around being like, what? what is this? Is this just it? Are we... Is, is the torture just going through this labyrinth continuously? Is there something coming after us? And then we finally meet everyone else. Everyone is partying, having a good time. There's lights going on everywhere. There's smoke. There's like a smoke machine or at least some kind of mist. There's like pop and music going around and everyone's just having a good time. And we get even more confused. Like, this doesn't seem right. Some of us get the idea that maybe perhaps they're trying to lure us in, trick us. But apparently the devil himself comes up. He welcomes us. He seems excited to see us, even though we've never met him before, and he clearly has never met us before. He just knows that we're new. He is just basically this big stereotypical version of the devil, right? This big goat-legged, buff, red, giant, horned, goatee having devil. He's the stereotypical depiction of the devil, not anything really interesting. And he's coming at us like, all right, new guys. Is the word just like, what is happening? And he essentially explains to us, uh, oh, we, we don't do tortures anymore. We're kind of just done with tortures and whatnot. Uh, so we just kind of have a good time. We kind of do a little bit of sinful fun every once in a while. That's why everyone's partying. And it's just like, all right, I guess some of us are still a little eerie because what if it's still a trap or what if it's still being deceitful? Others are getting into it. And I'm just like, you know what? All right, I'll accept it. We start having fun. We start talking. And then all of a sudden, a bell goes off. The devil gets a disappointed look on his face. And essentially, someone comes up to me, someone uh, who is not a part of my group, someone who's clearly been in hell longer than me, and says, well, time to meet the quota, I guess. And I'm just like, what, what quota? And then he, there's like a wheel he spins, and it stops. One person starts looking a little anxious, and it seems like the devil apprehensively grabs him, grabs his arm, and starts twisting his fingers one by one he's writhing trying to get away and the devil starts laughing at this point and i'm just like what is happening so the person who came up to me and said the quote comment he ex he explained that look we don't really do tortures as much but unfortunately we have to meet a certain yearly quota and that yearly quota is at least one person has to suffer for an hour so that's what the big wheel is for more people's names get added and you spin the wheel and eventually it'll land on your name or someone else's name and that only comes once a year and the finger twisting is the torture that he is doing for him there's probably others he would have done and this is the part where i start to panic because i realize wait a minute it's eternal damnation i'm gonna be here forever my name's on that wheel eventually it's gonna land on me <laughs> even though a probability of that happening anytime soon is extremely thin but the fact you know it's eternal means it's going to absolutely happen and even though it only is going to last for an hour, it, it still hell's tortures, you know? 
Hell's tortures for an hour is still gonna be horrible, so I start trying to find a way to escape, and I start like seeing lights like God's looking down at me I'm like could you get me out of here please I don't want to do this I don't want to be I don't want to risk this happening it's like nope nope sorry mm -mm. like nope sorry mm -mm, nope, mm -mm. get out shoo me under with you and unfortunately I just had to face the fact that yep yeah, this is this is just life now this is just what's gonna happen in the end I'm thinking about that situation now and if I was in that situation currently and this is coming from someone I feel as if that like when people say like, oh yeah, in this situation, I wouldn't even act like that. Let's say you go ahead and present a hypothetical, like, oh, what if someone came at you with a knife? Anyone would go ahead and say like, I'd fight back, or I'd go ahead and like, uh, uh, grab his arm or something like that. It's like, you don't know that. Because, yeah, you're saying that because you're in the comfort of the safety. You're saying that because that's what you like to think you do. But when you're in that situation, you don't know. You really don't know what you're going to do. You can run and piss your pants, you can freeze up. Like, I'm sure a lot of people would say, I run! But those same exact people are probably the kind of people who would just tense up. You know in an action movie where there's a lot of destroyed buildings and a giant billboard comes down, and everyone runs, and then there's that one dunderhead who just goes, <laughs> which causes the hero to come in and save them last second, which, why did you waste your time? Darwinism was gonna take effect. If not the billboard, it would've been something else. So, I'm not sure how I would really react, but I did think about it today, and it made me think, it doesn't seem that bad, you know? Huge amount of people in that wheel, only one hour, and yeah, it's gonna happen eventually. I mean, you know, eternity and whatnot. It's gonna happen for a countless amount of times, but it's gonna be very split apart. <laughs> Unless I get really, 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 really unlucky. Which at that point, considering how chill the devil seemed inside that dream, he would probably just be like, look, I'm gonna take your name off for a couple of years. You've been through this enough. I'm like, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Devil. I think I might have had that dream because a lot of people often think about hell and the morality aspect of it, right? The devil is all about sin, so why does he punish people for sins? Now, I have heard... Now, I'm not a religious person. I'm not an atheist either. Like I said, I'm agnostic. I'm someone who's very neutral when it comes to a lot of this kind of stuff. So, but I've heard, and correct me if I'm wrong, I've heard someone say that the devil and demons torture people in hell for their sins because they actually love God. They, they love Jesus, they love heaven, and they do it as a form of punishment because they are still kind of like, they're at least in their mind, they're still on the side of good. I've heard that, I don't know if that's true. I mean, that would definitely kind of explain things where it's like the devil still loves God, that's why he tortures people for sins. I don't know. I'm not a religious person. I'm sure there's going to be some person who's going to pull out a holy bibble and go, Um, you're wrong because in uh, Stupid Canoopin 45-2, uh, it says here. Calm down. You want to have a discussion? I'll have a discussion with you. I'm not going to deal with that, though. Calm down. And now, yeah, that was one of the more sillier dreams, but still one worth bringing up because I wanted to, you know, have something to mix the tone. I was going to have more of a serious tone for the series, but then I also thought, like, <laughs> uh, oh, God. But then recording them on the spot kind of made me realize, yeah, it's just kind of not the person I am. I can do that scripted, but yeah, these are more on the spot. So anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you had a beautiful day, and I hope it gets even more beautiful. Your connection will be strange.